absolute best backlights you can add, and they're completely custom. You don't believe me? Check this out. Hyperion guys, and it's not new, it's not even the cheapest option, but if you want your backlights to really sync and be dynamic, this is it. There's tons of tutorials, so I'll make this updated 2024 version as fast as possible. That being said, let's jump right into the bare minimum that you need for this project. And a quick disclaimer, to me this makes the most sense on screens that are 75 inches or above, but you can do it for any size obviously. Now, the first thing you need for this is a Raspberry Pi. I recommend the Pi 4, but the Pi 3 works too. You need a micro SD card with at least eight gigabytes. Now I've seen people put 32 gig SD on this. Please don't, it's a waste of the card. You need power for the Pi, but we'll get to that in just a second. You need a USB to HDMI capture card and an HDMI splitter. If you watch shows in HDR, then you will have to get a more expensive splitter. Otherwise, most can handle 1080p. You don't need jumper wires if you want to sit and solder, but I'd recommend just getting jumper wires. It's just much easier. Trust me. You need RGB strips, of course. You can either grab some 5 volt WS2812B, or what I'd recommend is the 12 volt WS2815. This, of course, will bring us to power, which I want to discuss a little. I'll be showing a 12 volt setup because my screen is 110 inches, but you need either a 5 volt or 12 volt power supply. A metal power box is probably the best in my opinion, but you could do this with a power brick if you went 5 volt route. Deciding what voltage is really up to you, but understand with 5 volts, the further your strip goes, the more chance of having voltage drop. Now, of course, connecting both ends of the strip could solve this, but in my opinion, it's just an extra step when you can just get a 12 volt and it runs a bit further. If you get a five volt metal box, you can also power your Pi, but if you go 12 volt, like I recommend, then you'll need a five volt power supply for your Pi. Now, don't worry guys, I'm leaving links to all of this stuff in the description box below. So calm down. That sums up the bare minimum you need, but I'm going to toss a small list of some optional things right here and in the description box below. Now, believe it or not, this was your hardest part, spending the money on the components or getting approval to spend the money and convincing your spouse to let you put up more lights. That being said, let's jump into getting this set up. But before we do, I need you all to smash that like button if you're still here and subscribe to the channel. This helps the algorithm and helps me grow. Thank you for even stopping by the channel. Now, back to it. So the first thing you wanna do is navigate to raspberrypi.com and click on software. You wanna download and install the Raspberry Pi imager. While that's installing on another tab, Google search Hyperbian and click on the hyperion-project.org link. From there, under installation, go ahead and download the Hyperbian image. The image will download zip, so just make sure that you unzip it after. Now, make sure that your micro SD is already plugged into your computer. Usually you can find one pretty cheap if you don't already have one or one didn't come with your purchase. But make sure that's plugged in because you're gonna need that to image the Raspberry Pi. Under Raspberry device, select your Pi. Mine is the Pi 4, so I'll select Pi 4. Under operating system, you will see a lot of pre-made images. These come in handy for other projects like Home Assistant, but today scroll to the bottom where you're gonna see custom, and under custom, you're gonna select the Hyperbian image that we just downloaded and unzipped. Under storage, select your micro SD card and click next. 
When the customization screen appears, click edit settings. This is where we're gonna set the host name, the username and password, we're gonna configure our Wi-Fi, and we're gonna enable SSH under the services tab. It's important to make sure you enable SSH since this is what we'll use to start the service initially. Once you have that done, then hit save and select yes to proceed with imaging that SD card. From here, I'd personally recommend putting the SD card in the Pi and powering it on. After about a minute or two, you're gonna need to find that Pi's IP address. Now, there's two ways that I can tell you to do this. If you have your own router like me, just log in and look for the Pi with the host name you just made. But another way is open up a command prompt and type ping space whatever that host name was that you created. Once you have the IP address, you can SSH to it to enable the Hyperion service. Now, I know this may seem like a lot, but at the end you will think, you know, this really wasn't that bad. Or you will have burned down your house, which speaking of damages, I'm not responsible if you kill your strips or pie or house, you're grown. So let's SSH to the pie. To do this, we will use PowerShell. Now, if you're doing this on a Mac, well, sorry for you sucker. But seriously, you will just need to download an SSH client like Putty, Putty, or maybe Putty. And then since you decided to use Putty, you will put the IP in for host name and change the port to 8090. Now back to us PowerShell users, launch PowerShell as an admin and type SSH space, the username you just set up at the IP address of your Pi and hit enter. Then when the password part pops up, you're gonna hit the password that you just created and hit enter again. If you're not familiar with PowerShell, then understand while you're typing your password, nothing will show, so don't mess it up. After you do that, you should see a giant Hyperbian text. From here, we need to turn the service on. So we'll type sudo space systemctl space enable space dash dash now space Hyperion at root dot service and hit enter. Don't worry, I put it in here so you can see it. It should either look like nothing has happened or it will kick a bunch of data out. Next, you would type sudo space systemctl space status space Hyperion at root dot service and hit enter. You should, at that point, look for a highlighted text showing active slash running. Now, every time the Pi boots up, the Hyperion service will auto start. But before we dive into the Hyperion software, let's get everything else connected. And as a side note, you may consider setting your Pi to a static IP, but this is really up to you. I didn't personally do this because one, I don't plan on adjusting the software very often. And then two, I can always find my new IP address pretty quick if I need it. Now I'm gonna to toss a diagram up and before you guys cook me in the comments about this diagram, I just wanted to give everyone a visual in case you understand things better this way. First thing I suggest doing from here is prepping the wires on your RGB strip, meaning stripping the loose wires back, connecting the adapter, and stripping those back. Depending on your screen size, you may or may not have needed two 16 by 4 foot strips. Remember, I'm showing the design and setup that I used, so you may need to adjust a few things for your own. Like, if you bought the 2812B, then you'll notice that you only have one data line versus two. And if you're not using a projector, then you may not have a receiver that needs connecting. So after your wires are prepared, then you can install the strips on your screen. Decide your orientation based on where you want your wires to run. From here, we start connecting everything to the power supply and Pi. And I'm sorry, I completely forgot to mention that your metal power supply doesn't come with a plug. So you wanna make sure that you have one and connect it like this. On the Pi, using your jumper wires, you want one end to plug into pin 6, which is ground, and another jumper wire to plug into pin 12, which is GPIO 18, used for data. The ground wire should be spliced with one of the ground wires on the RGB strip, usually the white one. The other loose ground wire on the strip should connect 
to the negative slot on your power supply. If your Pi and power supply don't share a common ground, it will not work properly, trust me. The GPIL18 data wire would connect to the two data wires off the 2815 strip or the one data wire off the 2812B. But let me explain something real quick with data. If your Pi isn't close to your strip, then you may need something additional like a resistor or a logic level converter or both. It's the reason that I suggest running a longer HDMI if needed and keeping your Pi close to your RGB strip. That itself may present its own challenges, but let me touch on those at, at the end. That's actually it for the wiring part. Actually, that wasn't it. The 12 volt wires need to be spliced together and plugged into the positive side of your power supply. Completely forgot that, but want to make sure that I explained that as well before we moved on to the rest of the cables. Next thing you want to do is plug in your USB to HDMI in the Pi and run an HDMI cable to your splitter and then plug it into one of the outputs unless HDR. If you have HDR, then you want to make sure that you plug it into the output for the HDR. Your source, mine being the receiver, goes into the source on the splitter and the other output on the splitter goes to either your TV or your projector. Again, I know it sounds like a lot, but that's it. Now we just need to configure the application and talk about some of the negatives because there's always negatives, right? If you haven't already powered on your Pi and power supply, after a few minutes from a browser, navigate to the Pi's IP address colon 8090. This should launch the Hyperion application. If for some reason this doesn't launch it, double check your IP and that everything is powered on. And if there's still an issue, then SSH to it again and do the enable service steps again. Once you have it up, go to the wrench in the top right setting, level and change it to advanced. On the left side under LED instances, go to LED output and change controller type to WS281X. You also wanna change the maximum LED to the total number of LEDs. And if you already have them installed on your screen and cut them down to size already, then you should count each LED, taking note to how many are on the left side, the top, the right, and the bottom. Input that total number here, and then change GPIO number to 18. Now, under hardware LED count, put the same number as max LED. Auto start should be checked, but if not, make sure it's checked. Then click on LED layout. Under here, we're gonna click the classic layout and enter the total number of LEDs on the top, the bottom, the left, and the right. If for some reason you have a gap in your lights, you can add a gap position and length. On input position, this is where you're going to set the starting point of your lights from data and power. Depending on where yours are on your screen inside this field, move your arrow keys up and down to find the correct position. You'll notice that it moves on the right side around the screen. So wherever your actual lights start, that's where you want that to actually start. If when you get there, the direction is the wrong way, you can click reverse direction to make sure that it switches it. Make sure you save everything from here. Now go to sources under LED instance and check enable USB capture. This is what's gonna make sure that we're getting the video feed from our actual source. From there, you're gonna go to capturing hardware and under USB capture, check activate. At device discovered, add your USB device, which you should see as a drop down option. If you don't see it as a drop down option, you may try unplugging and replugging. And if you still don't see it, you may also try rebooting your Pi entirely. Encoding format should be YUYV. And then go to device resolution. And this one you may want to play with a bit. Color accuracy is even better the clearer the image, meaning 1080p, but usually that comes with some lag or delay. I've set mine to 720 and set my frames to 30 per second. This gives me the best response time for my setup and the best color accuracy. Make sure once you decide what you're gonna use, you save your settings. 
Last thing you want to do is go to Network Services tab and make sure API authentication, Internet API access, and local admin API are all checked. Hit Save. Assuming you have everything connected and your TV and projector are on, you should be able now to see an image. In the top right, if you click the monitor and hit Live Video, you should see an image of what's on your screen and a preview of what the lights around the screen show. You're done. You can start enjoying movies and games now. If you remember, I said that there were some negatives. So let me touch on those real quick before you head out. Depending on where your equipment and screens are, it may mean running cables across your home behind walls or etc. It may also mean adding power outlets. It really just depends on where you want it. But it's something you should consider so that way you're not stuck in your attic looking for ways to connect cables across your home like me. Number two, it's not as cheap as some would lead you to believe. Realistically, you should expect to spend somewhere between $350 to $500 for this setup. Number three, setting this up may break your RF signal on your remote. It doesn't happen always but I've seen it happen and it actually happened on mine. And then lastly, it does take some time to set up. Don't rush or you could mess something up or wire something incorrectly. Doing that could kill your pie, it could kill your strip, it could mess up a whole lot of different things. Probably takes a day with no kids and six months or so with kids. With all of that, they are still worth it and still the best option. They look great paired with my scones and work great with my automations. If you're interested in the full design of my media, or maybe just the automation side, leave a comment below and make sure you're subscribed. If you have questions or you spotted something that I didn't cover, leave those as well. I'm gonna leave you with a few final shots, but until my next video, deuces.